Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and there won't be any gameplay footage of this particular title for what should be fairly obvious reasons if the title of the video is any indication. The Steam Store page is for the game Abstractism, an extremely basic concept of a game that has a few notable features that have given rise to some fairly severe concerns. The story that got me interested in taking a look at what was going on was due to a Twitter posting that led me back to Backpack TF forums in which the user Poor Asian Boy was talking about how he was scammed during a trade of a Team Fortress 2 strange Australian rocket launcher which sells for between $70 and $130 on the Steam Marketplace. Paying $100 and accepting the offer while in-game without really taking the time to scrutinize the offer, which makes sense, TF2 is owned by Valve and the Australian rocket launcher is a fairly unique looking item. However, the item he received was the strange professional killstreak Australian rocket launcher attached to the game Abstractism, a virtually worthless item compared to the one that he thought he was getting. Now, when I went to check the item in question, I saw the developers were already attempting to cover their tracks, changing the name of the item to Nope and changing the image as well. However, when you look at the address URL, it still clearly shows the original name of the item, Strange Professional Killstreak Australian Rocket Launcher. Then they later updated the item again in the hopes of further erasing their tracks. However, again, the URL still clearly shows the item name, which has not changed. And when I went through the over 170 items provided by the game for sale on the Steam Marketplace, I found some other notable additions which I felt were worth taking a look at. The first is the Gay Box, which has an accompanying item description of, quote, This case is locked and requires to be gay to open. Contains nothing LOL. It's just a picture in your inventory should come with gay key. Of which there is indeed a gay key, which is described as you can put it in your body. The next on the list was Lord Gaiman's Banhammer, stating this item is a joke and doesn't belong to Valve employee. Then we have the Vintage Banhammer, listed as the Level 9001 Mallet of Banishment with an item description of Bans Steam Accounts of Players Killed. And then there's also the Genius item, which is a picture of Hideo Kojima. Now, in addition, the game has been accused of both containing a virus and of being a crypto miner. On the discussion forums for the game, a user posted a screenshot of a malware byte scan that showed that one of the executables had been flagged as a generic malware and was quarantined. The file in question, steamservice.exe, is explained by the developer as being necessary as that is how their game handles item drops, which let's put a pin in that one, we're going to be circling back to that in just a moment. Now, I purchased the game for myself and installed it, and before I even attempted to launch the game, I ran a Windows Defender scan on the game's executables and on my computer from a fresh install, the steamservice.exe was pegged as a Trojan virus that allows remote execution of commands, which could potentially fall into line with the developer's stated intent attention on how they handle their items or if it's a virus. Also in response to a Steam review stating that the game was a crypto miner, the developers responded with a contradictory statement in which they say that abstraction mines Monero while at the same time stating that the game does not mine cryptocurrency. In a news post six days ago, the developers stated that item drops were now live, stating that drops are handled differently in this game than in other games as it makes use of incremental drops that start at 15 minutes and then the time interval is doubled each time from 15 minutes to half an hour to an hour, then two, then four, then eight, then 16, with a maximum number of weekly drops set at seven items per week, which would take a person 31 hours and 45 minutes of time of the game running in order to obtain all seven drops and then and the developer performs a manual reset on the drop limits and the developers state that you should be in game to allow them to reset the counter which occurs on Fridays. Also with regard to rare items the longer you're in the game the greater the chance that you'll get a rare. Which is suspicious in a number of ways but as I've recently fallen into a habit of delineating facts from my opinion which is something a lot of you seem to be enjoying let's give a basic bullet point rundown of the pertinent facts and then we'll move on to my analysis and opinion which is something that this time I would ask you guys to pay attention to. We have a user that was scammed from a faked Team Fortress 2 item on the Steam Marketplace where they were provided an item from this game instead. The developers then updated the item's image and description not once but twice, however the URL retained the original item name so we're able to verify it is indeed the same Marketplace item. The developers have produced over 190 items for this $1 game and some of those items are suspect at best. The game has also been accused of being a crypto miner, something that the developers have both confirmed and denied. 
And the game's executables also contains a file that has been flagged as a virus, and I was able to confirm this 100% with my own computer. Regardless of implications, the game was still guilty of duplicating a Team Fortress 2 market item that was used to scam a Steam customer, and the game package contains a file that is being flagged as a virus that is knowingly and willfully being distributed by the game's developers. Regardless of intent, this could very easily be seen as malicious behavior on the part of the developers, and as a result of their actions, I personally will be flagging this game for Valve to review. And if all you're interested in is the facts without my opinion or analysis, then feel free to stop listening now. But given the nature of what is going on here, I would urge you to stick around and listen to the very end for this one. I didn't realize when I started this just what exactly was going on, but if you do decide to depart now, thank you for your time. Don't forget to leave a like on the video on your way out. It would be very much appreciated. All right then, now there are a couple of points I would like to go over here. The first is that my primary concern here is not only in what this game has done, which was contribute to a person getting scammed out of their money by deliberately posting a fake version of a high dollar value TF2 item, it is more with the items in general, how they're delivered, and why I highly suspect that this game is in fact a crypto miner and actually is an exceptionally brilliant one at that. Now bear with me for a moment and I'll explain what I think is likely going on here. Now, I think this is the sort of thing that we may be seeing more of in the coming days with games on the Steam storefronts. Now, after I've had some time to think about it, I think it's extremely likely that scams such as this will potentially replace asset flipping. You see, these games that promise item drops such as this that are based on the length of time the game has been running, coupled with the game being so simplistic, means that the game's developers are actively implementing a system that encourages the game remain open 24-7, and in particular to have the game open at a specific period of time each week in order for the devs to quote, reset the item drops. This is crucial for two very different but interlinked reasons. First, if this is a crypto miner, which I believe it to be, it would be in the developer's best interest to make certain that you run the game all day every day, and so they encourage that through the use of item drops. Second, they would also need a way to collect the calculated hashes and to distribute new ones, say through an executable that allows them to run remote commands like this Steam service executable. On the CSO Online article regarding detection and prevention of crypto mining, they had the following to say. To mine any cryptocurrency, you must be able to communicate, to receive new hashes, and then after calculating them, return them to the servers and put them in the correct wallet. Which is exactly what this Friday reset from the developers is likely doing. It is collecting the calculated hashes and distributing new ones in addition to resetting the item drops. But that is also what I think to be just a small piece to the puzzle. Now on its own, rather intelligent, but I can tell there's more here. You see, think about this. You have a $1 game on Steam that drops marketplace items at a rate of 7 per week as long as you run the game for 40 hours. A lot of those items are deliberately trolly in nature. They most likely removed the TF2 rocket launcher because they knew Valve would kick them to the curb for it, but they've left a few items that people would actually want because of the comedic nature. They've also set up a system that will encourage an actual market trade to occur with their nearly 200 items. The vintage Banhammer has multiple purchase requests for between 2 and $5. Not much when compared to CSGO or TF2, but for a $1 game? Also, think about this. Valve has cracked down pretty heavily on Steam trading cards, making it harder and harder to earn money through the use of Steam trading card bot farms. But a game that drops marketplace items at a rate of 7 per week? and some of those items have actual value, that is actually more than what you would get from a Steam trading card harvesting bot in most cases, and multiply those items by bot farms that contain hundreds and thousands of bots. All the while, you'd have to be running the game using its launcher in order for the Steam service executable to drop the items, meaning the game's developers just turned every Steam bot farmer into their own personal crypto miner in addition to the legitimate players of the game. And for the bot farmers, it's an automatic win as well, because unlike trading cards, the game will drop marketplace items at a rate of 7 per week per game until the end of time. That means bot farmers will never have need of an additional game to feed them, meaning their money printers just became that much more profitable. However, the profitability keeps going up from there. Those bot farmers have to get their copies of the game to run, so you have profits from selling keys for the game at a reduced price on the Russian grain market, which the developers would most likely do in order to spread their crypto miners. Now, some of you would probably think, well, that would flood the market and bottom out the price of the items, except we've already seen that they're taking a cue from the larger game markets and have begun instituting tiered rarity, which arbitrary scarcity is the easiest way for a developer to maintain an item's value. 
So they only care about the rare items, which will maintain the market trade, and the bot farmers are crypto mining and converting their worthless unending supply of market items into gems, which you can do, which they then can use through their normal means to turn into cash by purchasing Steam card packs for other games or trading for CSGO crates and keys and the like as they typically do. Oh, and on top of that, the developers earn 10% off of each market sale, which will be the higher value items like the vintage banhammer. This leaves the developers with the following vectors of income all off of this one game. First is legitimate market sales to Steam users. Then we have gray market key sales to Russian bot farmers. We have crypto mining from bot users and legitimate users alike. And then we have residual income from the higher value market items that get traded and they get a 10% cut off of. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the new replacement for asset flippers. Now, as I said, it's genius, really, but it's also a little scary because this is what happens with how the gaming markets on Steam have been implemented. And with basically no oversight or curation whatsoever, there's literally nothing to stop it from happening. I can all but guarantee you this will be the new vector for asset flippers, and it will work because for every one person that realizes the game is a crypto miner, there are a hundred out there that likely have no idea. Or... I could have just let my mad scientist brain out of its cage for far too long, and this is the result, which is also possible. Regardless, with situations like these, I do tend to urge my viewers to please share this video as much as you can if you feel there is any credence to what I'd be insane, because this is very dangerous for a lot of different reasons, and it is important that people see what is going on here. It is important that Valve see what's going on here, because they do need to start stepping in and putting in a stop to things like this. And as always, please do let me know what you think down in the comments below. Links to my social media, Discord, and Patreon are in the description if you happen to feel so inclined. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.